Okay, hello. Uh, my name is uh, Alexander, and I'm going to talk about uh, not sequences, um, but uh, structures. Um, about uh, the NGL viewer, it's uh, my kind of molecular graphics project, and uh, the twist there is it runs completely in a web browser. Um, and thanks to all the nice advances uh, of the kind of web browser as a platform, um, like having access to the GPU with WebGL, uh, you can do some pretty nice things. Uh, this is a kind of a, a, a summary slide of what things you, you can visually do uh, with, with NGL. And the thing here is like you, you can go to that URL and um, each of those examples, you can click on uh, the little button in the uh, top right corner and uh, then you can edit that example and <laughs> see the code that generated it um, in an online editor. And it, it works from like small ligand molecules like here, it's just a couple of dozen atoms to, um, to really uh, virus capsids with two and a half million uh, individual atoms. So, okay, I want to give some tutorial-like overview of um, showing how kind of fairly easy it is to use it. Um, so you can create your standard HTML page and then you just import one script and wait for the DOM <laughs> to finish and then you create an NGL stage object and then you can load files into it and then stuff will get displayed. Um, so in the kind of there's a scheme of uh, things how how the library is organized. Uh, I came up with so you create the stage object and then whenever you load a file uh, in onto it, uh, you you create a component. Um, and at that point, like you haven't done any visualization, you can just uh, do calculations on it if you like. Um, so the viewer is not only a viewer, you can just use it as a library to do calculations on the client side. Because um, not everything has to be kind of pre-computed on the server. Um, but if you want to have visualizations, you can add this representation components, which give you access to the kind of standard array of Tune displays or space fill or ball and sticks and whatnot. Um, and there are a lot, lot of file formats supported, um, starting with uh, formats for just loading uh, structures, uh, which include the set of coordinates and the topology and the bonds. Uh, if there are no bonds in there, they kind of get auto, <laughs> auto detected. Um, but you can also look at um, if you have like molecular dynamics data, uh, you can load that uh, in there too. Um, often you, you you just have a separate topology description, so you can load that in and then add the uh, coordinates for all the frames later. You can also work with uh, volume data um, from uh, cryo-EM experiments or X-ray um, um, electron densities but also like any, any kind of volumetric data, if you're doing electrostatics calculations um, over a, a volume uh, that encloses your, your protein or, or structure, you can load that in there too and show it. Now if you just have generated surfaces offline someplace else, you can, you can feed them in. Or sometimes you do coloring or things, you just wanna get some uh, um, extra data tables in, so you uh, have some kind of uh, little helper functions to load in CSV or JSON or message pack or just text and XML data. Um, yeah, but so for structural data, you have the normal array of representations, um, cartoons, space fill, surfaces, so you can directly uh, calculate molecular surfaces on, on the client. Uh, for volume data, there's an example here. So 
you can look at the um, you can you can look at uh, slices of it or an either surface um, coloring I talked about that yeah okay um, one slide so everything's um, open source online on, on github and if your worker would like to work on kind of a related pro project with that. We have two postdoc positions open at the Protein Data Bank in San Diego. So if you have any interest in that, uh, please let me know. <laughs>